Hey everyone, hope you're having a great weekend. Um, today we're going to just mess around with some variable pipe and some pretty simple twisted lines. So let's just get started with some grasshopper right away. And the first thing we're going to do is type in rectangle. And I'm just going to give it a size of I don't know, 15 or so. Plug the X and the Y into there. And then I just want to work with one singular surface. So I'm going to type in rebuild curve. And for the degree, we need to type in three. So, so it's a three degree curve. Let's plug that into here. And then I'm just going to type in 55 for the number. We don't need it to be too crazy unless you want to get the corners extremely uh, uh, 90 degree, um, but that would add a lot to it. So, um, And then we're just going to start with a pretty much a simple loft. Um, so we'll type in move in the Z direction. Okay, and we need a series of those, looks like that. And let's just start with uh, seven for now. Okay, and let's type in five maybe for how far they go up in each count. That looks good. And then from here, I'm gonna just type in rotate so we can get the centroid point off of each one of those rectangles. I'm gonna type in rotate. Okay, we're going to rotate the lifted squares. Um, we're going to change the radians to degrees, and the plane is going to be on the centroid. And for here, we're just going to need basically another series. Try to leave this semi-clean here. All right, and then uh, I'm going to give it a slightly higher number than it's 5. Let's type in 25. Okay, so you should end up with something like this. And if you were to loft that, you can see it's kind of making a twisting shape. You can make it more twisted or less twisted, really easy. Okay, and let's scale down the bottom maybe. So I'm gonna just type in scale again. Let's type in area. We're gonna plug that back into our rotated curves. Um, the geometry goes to the rotated curves again, and then I'm going to type in series again. Oop, we can just probably copy and paste it from here. We don't need the 20, uh, the 23. We'll just type in one because otherwise our curve is going to get way too big. Okay, and I'm going to bring that really, really low, and you'll notice we're getting that to be turning red, which obviously something's not right, and it's just because the bottom curve is basically non-existent. So I'm just going to type with one so the bottom stays the same. We kind of skip over it and then everyone after that uh, starts to get um, scaled. So so that's looking a little pretty good. I'm going to mess with the, the scale just once again. Let's kind of tighten that up just a bit. Great. And maybe the top few don't actually get scaled. Uh, let's see here. I'm going to make the actual rectangle at the beginning smaller. There we go. Now we can mess with the scale a little bit more. The top gets wider. I'm going to turn down the count on the rotate. So it's just the bottom that's starting to rotate. You can still make it look crazy, but I'm going to try to leave it relatively simple. Looks pretty good to me. All right, and then from here, we're just going to subdivide this out and we'll and, uh, try to get some lines out of it. So we use ISO trim. Then we're going to type in divide domain square. Okay, plug this into here, plug it into there. Okay, one for one direction, because we don't want them in X, Y coordinates. We just want the Z, so I'm going to type in 55 for the V. There we go. We'll start to generate the UV lines in the Z direction. I'm going to type in deconstruct B rep because all we want are lines. Okay, I'm going to type in item for list item. I think it should be the yep, first one. Awesome. So we can increase the amount or lower the amount. 
Um, we can start to mess with the rotation again, make it crazier and crazier. And let's say you wanted to rotate the top, all you need to do is type in reverse, and it'll flip. So the top starts to get whacked out. I might bring this higher. Maybe we will do the top. See how that looks. All right, and then from here, we're gonna type in variable pipe right here. So we need to plug in the curves into here, and then we need to give it an evaluation. So let's type in evaluate, and we're gonna do length. So it's basically gonna set points um, throughout each one of those lines. So we're gonna use one as the end point, oh, the starting point, excuse me. And then we're gonna bring one lower. Let's go halfway for now, holding shift. That'll be kind of the center point there. And the bottom point, which would be zero. Oop, I messed that up. Let's undo, undo, hold shift, plug it all in. We'll go to the top. All right, perfect. Try to keep this clean. And we need to plug this uh, lowercase t into, into the lowercase t there. And now we need to give it three variables. Uh, for the pipe dimension, our radius. So we'll just hold shift, plug all three of those in there. And you'll see we're starting to get geometry starting to happen. So first things first, I'm gonna just inverse this almost. So the top is zero, the midsection maybe is smaller, and the bottom's actually a little bit wider. Cool. I might want to mess with a couple of things in a bit, but overall it's starting to look pretty cool. Not sure if that many rotations is needed for the aesthetic I'm kind of looking for. Yeah, so it's looking pretty sweet already. All right, and I'm just going to bring that bottom. Actually, what if we made the mid thickest? The bottom dimension goes thin again, and then we go back to our evaluate point. Maybe it's not so high. Get it a little bit lower. It goes thin to thicker to thin. That might look pretty cool. Okay, and then I'm going to type in bounding box. Um, right from here, we're going to right-click on a union, and then we need to flatten it. So it's one singular box. And I might just double click on the wire so we can keep this all the same. I'm going to type in volume so we can get our centroid of the volume here. We're going to type in scale nine uniform. So we're going to go back to the plug there. That's our center. And then the X, Y direction, we're going to scale it down slightly so we can get some layering starting to happen within here. That might be a little bit too much. I'm going to hide these so we can start to see what we're doing. There we go, starting to get some layering happening. Great. Now I'm just gonna select all four of those, hit Alt, and now all we have to do is just plug that into here. Let's do it another time. Perfect. Three might be enough. And then just to keep all these together, I'm gonna just plug in each one of these scaled figures here into a B-Rep plug. That way we're not having to bake out and select all of those. So if we were to bake this out, let's see here if we go to render view, let's see what that starts to look like. That's looking pretty sweet. Pretty cool curves happening up the center. Yeah. Pretty cool. I think the dimensions got to change just a bit. And we'll see where it takes us. Okay. Let's turn down the radius just a bit more so we get some light, light in there. Okay. And then I might turn up the bottom just a bit more. Let's bake that out, see what happens here. There we go. Maybe we do want more rotation. Turn that up. Let's go, let's do 33. Okay. 
I might turn this back to four. Awesome. Now I'm going to turn the move down to, let's do three. And let's turn that back up to five, maybe. Try and make it kind of half and half. Very cool. Again, I'm just kind of playing around. All right. And then what I want to do, and we might want to flip these after all, but let's type in mirror. And we're going to mirror this geometry. And by default, I believe it's on some sort of plane. So I want to do it on the X, uh, Y plane. So it's basically on itself. And I'm going to type in X, Y, Z to create a point. And uh, let's just type in five in the Z direction, plug that into here. We're gonna have to bump that up. Might have to go greater than five. Let's bump that up to 30 for now. Okay. So let's take all those, bake them out, see what it looks like. There we go. Starting to get some pretty cool effects happening. If we bring that lower. Yeah, really cool stuff happening. And I might just reverse it back, to be quite frank. I kind of liked it a little bit more where it's spinning at the bottom. So I'm going to hit undo. Okay, let's go back to our rotate. I'm going to unclick the reverse, and we're going to have to mess with the, the radius. Yeah, I think that's cooler. Okay, so the radius at the top needs to be zero. So turn that all the way down. Okay, and then I'm going to lower this down to 0 0.04, let's say. There we go. Yeah, I think that's a lot cooler. And then let's go back to our rotate again. I'm going to turn this to four. Awesome. And I know we're going kind of backwards from what we already did, but I want to make it a little bit taller. Maybe not that tall. Let's do four. Okay, and we'll go back up to our mirror. Let's bring this higher, get some space in there so we get that shimmering effect. Get it about just to the point because the radius at the end is zero, so it's basically nothing. It is nothing. So we get that same effect starting to happen. Let's see what this looks like. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Some really cool stuff happening on the inside too. And we might want to turn up the rotation, just the degrees. Let's see here. Turn it up to 33. All right. Might bump this up to five. Awesome. I'm going to turn that down to 20 again. Sorry, I'm going back and forth. Yeah, that's looking cool. Let's bake that out. Maybe this is it. I think that's it. Awesome. I'm going to play with the scale just a bit more. And to do that, I'm going to turn down the initial way at the beginning rectangle. Let's turn that down to like seven. Looks a little thick here. I kind of want them to look more like columns. So we get density, and then it starts to just flow away. And then for the evaluate, I'm going to turn that down to 0.35. So 35% line through the line. Okay, let's bake that out. I 
that's looking pretty cool. I think we need to bring it further down on the evaluate length even more. So let's do 25%. Let's get it lower. Oh shoot, wrong one. Oh, that was right. Might slow up your computer a little bit. It's a lot of geometry in here. There we go. I think that might be it. Let's hit bake again, see what that looks like. I just wanted to taper slightly more. Uh, when it comes to center, so we get these nice striations starting to develop. So I think that's it. Very cool. Nice shimmering effect starting to happen. Very cool. What happens if we just slightly lower it? I want some of those kind of waves to start to almost merge together. So let's type in ZS and then type in turntable. Very cool. Looks like audio waves. Awesome. So I think we'll be using this. All right. And one thing I am going to do right off the bat is just mesh this. I can put it on the lowest settings and it'll make the Rhino model run a little bit smoother and you won't probably see any difference within the geometry. So then from here, all I'm going to do is just join them all together. This might take a little bit longer. There we go. Much better. Okay, and let's kind of pick out a view that we like. So I don't think you can necessarily have a bad view with this particular model, but potentially you could. Okay, so that's a view I like. So from here, I'm just gonna take, copy and paste this over, rotate it a little bit. So it looks different on access. And then we'll do the same for here. And then if we just go to our plan view, let's just make sure they're slightly different. This one's showing off here, so that's our camera. This one's pretty similar but each side is going to be relatively symmetrical so it's going to be hard to get away from kind of a uniqueness to each one but that's kind of what i was going for anyway so if we go like this they look different but the same okay so i think this is going to be our rendering i'm going to scooch this guy just a hair over this one over just a bit looks cool all right and then from here, I'm um, just going to type in bounding box. Okay, I'll go to shaded mode real quick. And the landscape this week is, oh, let's do a beach. Because it's cold in Chicago, and life's always a little bit better on a beach. Okay, we're going to rebuild that. 125 by 125, 3, 3 for you and these. Gives you some nice... Uh, curvature within this model. This looks relatively way too big, especially for a close-up view, even smaller. Okay, I'm going to turn my points on. Let's make these sitting on the beach. I'm going to go to my select tab, select brush. Let's create the ocean kind of coming in. Just get a little bit closer, make a nice coastline. There we go. Okay. Now I'm just going to select all the things in the water here. This is going to be our sand layer. We're going to bring that portion just a little low. And then we're going to do the same thing. Try to replicate what we did. Oop, that won't work. We're just trying to replicate that coastline. Just like so. This is where it'll start to get a little bit deeper. I don't even know if it'll show up in the rendering, but okay. So you're making these almost like little terracing effects happening. We'll type in smooth. Do that again. Do it again over and over. And let's get it so it starts to replicate what a beach looks like. There we go. Nice drop off. Okay. You'll notice our models are floating in space. That's not what we want. So let's give it a water layer real quick. Okay, so that's our coastline here. 
Let's get our model near there. I'm going to turn this to our water layer. Change. Bring the water layer just a hair lower. It's not intersecting. Okay. Bring our models up to the beachfront here. Raise all this up just so we can see the bottom of the models here. Perfect. And let's see here in the background. Let's turn our points on again. Let's just make some hills really quick. So it doesn't look like it's just in the middle of a deserted island or something. Perfect. Type in smooth again. There we go. Make sure our models are sticking through just a bit. Probably not that far. I'm getting picky at the moment, but I want to see the most of what we just created. Awesome. So we get that nice beachfront happening. I'm going to change this layer uh, to sand for now. Go. Looking good. Okay. And then uh, let's give it some grassy areas in here. So I'm just going to copy and paste the sand and I'm going to hit Control A, lock everything. I'm going to hit paste on the sand layer again. We're going to change this to grass. I'm going to chop off where the coast edge is. Okay. Let's see here, get an interpolated curve, get it close, get it far. Just like that. We'll just hit Control Shift S, that's for split. Complete out that line. We're going to turn those points on again. And let's just pick some kind of random kind of areas in this, in, on this beachfront. Doesn't matter where they are. Okay, we're going to drag those up. Not super tall, but it's tall enough. Okay, and then we just take this and we can hold control and drag down. I'm going to hit smooth one more time. There we go. Some grass areas. We're going to unlock everything. And then from that grass, we can just uh, split them all and delete out what we don't need which is this there we go and we are all set for lumion So the model imported really nicely into Lumion, so we're just going to start adding some materials in here. So let's change up the water. Hopefully we can get it to kind of splash around the base of um, each one of these little structures. Uh, let's do a clear ocean maybe. Let's see if we can kind of mess with how big the wave scales are, or lack thereof maybe. Uh, let's do wave scale. There we go. Caustics make them pretty big. Reflectivity is fine. Let's get some more foam around the edges there. Wave height is not the greatest for us if we want them to kind of come around. Okay. And that looks pretty good. Okay. Let's go to sand. Go to various soil. Head to here. Looks like the texture might be a little bit too small. Maybe a little bit bigger. Looks a little bit too big. Okay, bring up the displacement in here. Perfect. Okay, let's change this area. And let's do some 3D grass. Uh, let's make it relatively big. Roughness. And that's pretty good for that. And then these. Uh, do an indoor material, maybe a stone. Looks pretty good. 
similar to our rhino model. It's kind of an arctic. I like that. Marble. I'm going to turn the gloss up, reflectivity down. And we'll hit OK. And we'll just start adding some landscape features around here. So let's go to objects. Uh, let's do palm trees. Maybe this one looks fine. Let's just paint them in. Oop, let's delete those. A little bit too dense. Okay. Let's do that again. Bring down the density factor here. Maybe these are kind of our background trees. And then let's do, oh, let's see here, some shorter ones maybe. Bring down the density for the kind of the mid ground here. And let's get some low line kind of stuff in here. Okay, and let's do some grass. Um, we don't really need it in the mid-ground quite as much as in kind of the foreground area here. Okay, and if we zoom in, it'll start to show up quite a bit more. Let's bring up the density on that grass. Okay, perfect. Let's get it close to the structures. I'm gonna bring up the density even more. It's looking pretty good. I might just kind of add some just by placing them. So it looks a little bit more natural for the most part. Okay, let's get in some uh, kind of random plants too. Not too many. And let's see here. I don't know if that's helping, but fine. Maybe a couple of these. Add some color variations to the green. So I think our view's right about here. Let's add some more vegetation through there. Get some greens popping. There we go. I think the view's right around here. It's looking pretty cool. I wonder if we get some tall trees out in the distance. Turn down the density again. Just paint them through. Just like that. Hit OK. And let's get down in there. Much better. There we go. Awesome. I think we're ready to go to town on the rendering. Save the view for now. Let's go to realistic. I'm going to add a camera filter for a two point perspective. How's that looking? Looking nice. Okay, let's get a close up here. Your preview is looking great. Okay, store that camera. Let's go back to here. Let's add some more grass in. Perfect. Looks good. Looks really good. looking nice. Let's play with the real skies for just a sec. I don't know if that lens flare is annoying me or is it helping the scene, I guess. I like it a little bit, but not that much.
It's looking pretty nice. Yeah, very cool. And just to try it, let's see what happens if we do precipitation. Let's bring that a little bit lower so it's kind of a wet day at the beach. Kind of helps a little bit. That's looking good. Okay. And then um, one thing I just kind of noticed is some of these plants look like they're floating. So I'm just going to take a handful of them. Just drag them down. They are floating. No, not that one. All these. All right. There we go, much better. This one might need to be drug down just a hair too. Okay. Looks good. And then let's just put a person in there for scale. Uh, let's put her kind of in the weeds. We only need one. Trying to get out of the rain. Okay. Let's see what that looks like. It's pretty good. water's not showing up quite as much as I want it to, so I might switch that out. But this is definitely going to be it. Let's uh, change that water up. It's just a something's just not quite right with it, so if, if, even if we don't see the water, it's not that big of a deal. There we go. Much better. And we can actually zoom in just a bit more. Awesome, I like it. So let's render this out. And we will be all set. Photoshop. All right, so this is looking pretty cool already. What I want to do is just Let's just try out some auto color and auto tone, see if that changes much. And then, like I said before, I kind of like to render out stuff a little bit dark, and then we can kind of come through and burn it and brighten some spots up just by our own kind of human touch or kind of artistic touch. I'm going to tone down that lens flare just a hair, otherwise it's a little bit distracting. And then just kind of go through and bring out the greens everywhere. Make it look lush and somewhere you'd want to visit just like that and we'll do a little bit of vignetting maybe just over the top just a bit a little bit on the bottom bring it up it's kind of hard to do all that kind of painterly stuff with a mouse but i'll just tone that down just a bit Looks great. This part here might be a little bit too green for me. I'll tone that down. Use hit alt while you're erasing. It'll bring it back to the original. The color, so it's almost like it's a foggy day or a little bit of fog for the, uh, the rain here. All right. I'm going to hit delete that back to normal. And then let's bring it out. And these little shimmer areas, I'm just going to burn those just a bit. Looking really good. And I'm just going to erase that out just a bit more. Looks great. Do another auto tone real quick. Auto Oop, wrong layer. Auto tone. See if that helps. Auto contrast. 
auto color. And that should be it. So uh, thanks for watching. Uh, please keep trying these out and sharing your stuff on Instagram and tag me in them. I love seeing it. And uh, hopefully we will be talking uh, to you soon. Bye.